Hey movie fans, and welcome back to another episode of the Uncharted Media Podcast. This is episode 191. Wow, well, there's not a lot of news this week, like, <laughs> at all. <laughs> but, uh, there was an extended cut of something that came out this weekend, so we'll talk about that, as well as extended cuts in general, and also, like, the difference between a director's cut and an extended cut, because at least to me, there is a difference, but also just, I think there's a discussion to be had of... Are they always worth it, or are they cash grabs, or are they somewhere in between? Before we get into all that, Josh, how you doing tonight? Chilling like a villain, my dude. Work's uh, crazy, life's crazy, but we're having a good time, that's for sure. Work sucks, I know. <laughs> she left me roses by the stairs. Uh, Please don't DMC this, post- this podcast. <laughs> yes, because that uh, won't get us in trouble whatsoever, copyright yeah, exactly. speaking. Just... <laughs> I hate the songs from our childhood just now resonate with us as adults. I'm going, ah, oh, I didn't heed the warnings. Uh, but Josh, <laughs> you watching anything good lately? I mean, I watched the uh, two episodes of Ring of Ring of Power <laughs> and that whole debacle that was the uh, did you hear about the, whole, the like all the weird stuff about when they dropped they accidentally dropped the second episode first. No. Yeah. For like a whole day, the, it was like the second episode dropped first and then they were like, oh, no, and took the show, the show completely off and then then dropped the two episodes. I was like, oh, somebody done goofed. <laughs> I feel like that happened once or twice with HBO. Like they dropped yeah. something a day or two early and or like a trailer a day or two early and was like, oh, some poor inter done goofed. Yes. <laughs> um, um, but how is it? So I want to. Hi. OK, I want to say I want to say this off the bat. For those who are review bombing stuff just because they can stop because it's irritating. Uh, the show is much better than I anticipated. Um, is it perfect? I mean, no. I mean, obviously, it's also only two episodes. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 they're both at an hour long each. So, like, that's awesome. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted out of a Lord of the Rings show. Um, our, my, I personally really, really, really enjoy it. I think it's going in a great direction. Um, I think anybody that's, like, really complain about it, cl- complaining about it has been real nitpicky for no reason. Um I don't know, man. I don't know. Personally, I don't, I don't, I don't, I've heard some people's complaints and I don't see what they're talking about. So, I mean, it, it is, it's Lord of the Rings. The I, one I'm complaint that it. I've seen is, and it's, I don't think it's a Lord of the Rings complaint, but I do think it's a valid complaint, but it's not specifically Lord of the Rings. It's just a modern movie mm-hmm. making aspect. Some people were complaining about the fight choreography to which I'm going, if you want to be mad about something, you will find things to be mad about in just about yeah. anything. However... It was a clip taken out of context. I'm watching him going, I kind of agree. But at the same time, there was flippy, weird choreography in the original Lord of the Rings. But mm-hmm. we're also in a state currently with movies that choreography is not to the standard that it used to be. And this is a well-known problem of like, there's still you, you movies watch. out there like John Wick that have great choreography. But a lot of times nowadays with choreography, it's make it cheap as opposed to make it good at least for western movies not so much with a, yeah in other I, mean, I, in can, the world. I mean i can see that but i think uh i'm gonna take the quarter crew type of approach is like okay cool so we're in a fantasy world not so things are not necessarily going to be quote unquote realistic whatever that might look for people doing massive sword battles um all those nerdy little knights who larp um at the same time, I think we have to understand what they're going for. What we're, what are we looking at? And if it's, I have, I don't know what clip you're talking about specifically, but if it's, a, was it a troll, the troll fight? Because that's yeah, the only. I think so. I like that fight a lot, honestly. Um, <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> I, it's the, the most elven way to to deal with a problem, honestly. So. Oh, you I, mean I jump on barrels? That. Yes, exactly. Like, why not? Um, Look, dude, if I'm not allowed to be mad about Legolas Mario hopping up, um, you know, I thought you were saying rocks. Mario hopping a barrel, and I'm going, that's a different <laughs> movie. Oh, gosh, it's been a long week. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, love, I'm I, love saying, I, I love saying it's been a long week on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, man. yeah. You I understand. Um, honestly, I feel like I watched something else, and I can't remember. 
I don't know. Concussion brain's kicking back in, so who knows? Actually, you know what? I have this thing where I like I write things down when I watch them, so like we can talk about them. You know, being smart and planning ahead sometimes. Wow. Only sometimes. It's almost like you're taking a play out of my playbook because that's exactly what I do well, with stuff. Uh, well, while yeah. Josh tries to remember with this concussion brain what he watched. <laughs> uh, Heather and I went to the theater to see Spider-Man No Way Home, the more fun edition, the like extended whatever quote unquote extended edition. Um, I'll say this. It is never a bad time seeing No Way Home in the theater. But anybody that's curious to see this movie in theaters, hoping for more stuff, stay home. Like, the stuff that they do add is in really weird spots. Like, they add a lot more stuff when Peter's in high school. And there's a couple lines here and there um, with all the Peters together towards the tail end. And there's little tweaks here and there like when i i believe this is a tweak uh because i've watched the original so many times when andrew first shows up they start playing his music really softly on the piano in the background like the amazing Mm -hmm. spider-man theme like oh that's cool there's a lot of little changes but unless you're like a diehard fan of no way home i don't know how much you're gonna notice or i don't know how much more it's gonna add to your experience that being said if you want to see no way home again on the big screen and it's limited time that it's there because there's really nothing in theaters go for it i saw in an rpx theater by us like the biggest screen with the best audio which i hadn't seen at the original the first time it was in theaters saw just in regular theaters so that was a really cool experience but for the in terms of the expanded stuff it didn't really add anything to the movie and i'm watching it and i would lean over to heather everyone as well yeah i can i can get why this scene was cut it doesn't flow as well like you're hoping Mm -hmm. for more peter one peter two peter three stuff and you get more here here's stuff with him in school i'm going this is not bad it's just I get why it was cut. Yeah, I feel that. I mean, it's and this will kind of go into our discussion, I guess, later. But yeah, I, I think if ever if, if you're going to re-release, the, to me, like you're going to re-release so that you, but you don't want to look like Sony with Morbin time, and be like, oh no, no, no we've got to change it a little bit so that we're not copying somebody, because you know, heaven forbid, we re-release a movie again avatar that's coming later this month Nah, i'm not happy about it uh so i know i watched other stuff but ring rings of power is the only thing i have which tells me that i watched a lot of youtube um i also have been listening to uh dungeons and daddies a whole lot oh yeah uh, you've mentioned them before on the podcast gosh, with the weirdest name just, ever it just uh, dungeons and daddies not a bdsm podcast it is so funny uh i'm like i'm getting i'm almost halfway through the first season and it's got it's just so fun i just i it's definitely less of a DD game and more of a comedy <laughs> comedy show with some fantasy and adventure uh uh aspects but it's, it's it's a great time regardless so uh so i spider-man was the only thing i watched but i did do something that i always have to bring up for the podcast this past weekend was the first weekend of horror nights Oh, mm. yes. I only did three houses, even though Heather and I were there almost the entire time, but we were just like walking around, absorbing it all. Uh, we did three houses. We did the original Halloween. We did Dead Man's Pier, Winter's Wake, I believe is what it's called. And Ooh. Universal Monsters Legends Clyde, which is basically the mummy versus the wolfman versus Dracula. Uh, dude, Dead Man's Pier is one of the most gorgeous houses I have ever walked through. So basically the premise is a classic uh, East Coast, like, fishing village, or kind of like a Swedish fishing village, almost, uh, in wintertime, being invaded by, uh, like, ships. Like, there's giant, there's, like, a gigantic ship, and all the lost men and women on the, on the ship. It's... Interesting. It's gorgeous, dude. Like, it, it, it's Josh's speed, minus, you know, Viking lore, but... <laughs> Hey, don't at me, bro. There's like an actual <laughs> village that they built and a giant boat, and it's so gorgeous. Uh, and then also, I've really enjoyed Halloween 78 for obvious reasons. Um, there are many squeals and um, screams during the house, but not of terror, um, of pure delight. It was not me being scared. It was me trying to hold back everything in me to not openly hug every Michael Myers I saw or just wrap my arm around certain set pieces just going... <gasps> You did the thing, 
I, I, I like <laughs> the thing. Uh, but this year is awesome. I cannot wait to go back um, and do the rest of the houses. I'm very curious about the weekend house. Everyone is saying that's way better than has any right to be. Universal Monsters is kind of... Eh, eh. Uh, it looks <laughs> great, but the story is not clear. And in Josh's limited experience, story is very important. Like yes. <laughs> Brian Frankenstein last year. Like Dead Man's Pier, great story. Halloween, great story. Universal Monsters, maybe I need to give it a couple more tries, but... This year should be amazing, and I'm I'm very happy we're in spoopy season now because it's never too early for spoopy season, isn't that right, Josh? I, uh, it's guy, it's it's just September, bro. Chill. September's <laughs> funny. <fine>. Chill. <laughs> if it's in Party City and and Hobby Lobby, it's fall now. Fair enough. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, well let's get into to, to the uh, to spoopy season as well as getting into the news. That transition was just on point, man. Just, just on hey, point. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> now to break our hearts. <laughs> this sucks, but I can't say I'm surprised. Which is basically yeah. just Warner Bros. Discovery. The past couple of months sucks, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they basically come out and said, "Yeah, I hope you guys weren't hoping for DC fandom this year because you're not getting it." Um, and here's where I'm gonna piss some people off. I'm not surprised. It's probably for the best. As much as I liked the first fandom, I thought it was great. The second one was okay. I liked the second DC fandom a lot better than some other people. I think the first one was significantly better. But here's why I don't think it's the end of the world. They say in their statement of, when we did fandom, the world was in a much different place. Now that we are more or less out of the woods in that respect, we are looking forward to bringing back our movies and TV shows um in front of live audiences and live conventions i'm going sure but you also have nothing new to report what are, what are the um nimodians say in phantom menace <laughs> we will t uh we will tell him when there's something to report we'll give him a reporter when we have something to report yeah. something along those lines that's dc right now like all the stuff that they probably would have shown us at dc fandom this year they showed us last year at dc fandom what are you going to show us Yet another the hierarchy of DC Universe is about to change trailer with Black Adam, which, you know, is coming this Thursday, more than likely. Um, this opens the door for it to come back to, like, proper conventions, which I think is good. I like yeah. DC fandom, and I, I wish more events live stream in the future. I get that Comic-Con wants still to have some exclusivity to make it worth it that people show up there. I get that. But at the same time, I wish more events were live streams so you could share it with a global audience and i think dc fandom did that incredibly well i get why they cut it though because they want to they want to get buzz at conventions again david zasloff is very old school he much rather promote something in person with people than via social media and don't get me wrong they'll still have a social media presence but i think this is this wasn't a cost saving measure i'm sure it was to a certain degree but i think it's more of that was indicative of its time. We are back to in-person stuff. I'm Maybe I'm just being optimistic. I think maybe they're hoping someday to do a D23-esque event where instead of just live hosting it, they can live stream it, but from an actual physical location type of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I would agree with that because I think as much as I love even the first fandom, it was uh, <clears throat> not without its jank. Like... The, the, oh, that Wonder Woman times. panel? Yeah. There, I mean, when your panel is just some people playing, like, Truth or Dare or, oh. or something like that, that's not really much of a panel, you know what I mean? So, like, I, there are some things that I... When it, it's fandom, it has felt like, okay, cool. So, we have this event. We have to make it event, an event. And so, everything has to show up. Like, we can't just mention something. It has to show up. Um and even like that, that little as as awesome as it was, that panel um, from oh geez, the 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 guys that are making the um, Static Shock comic books and stuff like that. Oh um, yeah, um, that that panel did kind of go a little long, and it was like I, maybe it felt like it went long only because like both you and I were like, okay, we we know why you're here. Just yeah, are you going to announce it? Like, come on, like open with that <laughs> later. Open with that, and yeah. then talk about everything else. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, obviously they wanted to build up, like, why is this important? Give us some history. And I get that, and I appreciate it. Um, 
But, but that being said, I do think getting back to doing in-person reveals, conventions, and stuff like that is definitely the better move. I, I, I don't see why um, at this t- point in time, like why you wouldn't live stream those. I do. I, I, I agree with you though that I think they. I wouldn't be surprised if they do like a D23 type thing, but probably maybe do like a Warner Bros like complete like um docket not just DC a WB23 <laughs> yes a WB23 in me <laughs> don't don't send your DNA, DNA kids the government can track it um like <laughs> learning new things every day my dude uh but yeah I just I feel like the I, I'm not like you I'm not surprised Fandom it did definitely feel like uh, a bunch of people because people would zoom in. I think that's the other thing. It's like it's definitely indicative of its time. Like we are no longer stuck in our houses anymore. Like I for what we had, I, I, lo- I, I love that we're like, yeah, stuck in our homes. And I was I think I watched the first fandom with you in no, no the, the that was the second one, one. Yeah, that was second, second, one. second one but still like the, like it is definitely like the world is in a different place finally again thank goodness um and i i think it's time to move on from fandom and i'm not against that necessarily also when it comes to conventions there's definitely a spot opening up yes we know marvel announced a bunch of stuff at san diego comic-con this year but that was the first time in a while i mean obviously there was a big elephant in the room as to why but marvel is withdrawing their presence quite a bit in recent years from san diego comic-con and other conventions in favor of d23 and other events so that lays the groundwork perfectly for warner brothers or dc to just go oh yeah we can easily just make comic-con our headline event each year like it used to be like when um oh was it tom hiddleston comes on stage as loki that was a huge like fan reaction moment or as much as we didn't like the end result when Zack Snyder got um what was it Henry Lennox to read a little bit from Dark Knight Returns and then they show the cool. the Batman the Superman logo and then mm-hmm. Batman logo Batman versus Superman you're like all right that's a cool moment those type of moments i think can be brought back now as great as DC fandom was Okay, I get that they want to transition to live. This could be a budget cut thing. If you want to be pessimistic, it's a budget cut thing. If you want to be optimistic, it's a they want to return to in-crowd thing. Also, I don't think it's a full news topic, but we talked about it last week. Well, looks like Dan Lin's not in the running anymore for the head of DC. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> which, that doesn't surprise me because he's had this production company that he's basically founded from day one. And I think taking over DC, he would have had to give that up. And I completely get it if you are emotionally invested in a company that you built wanting to stick with that for a while so i completely understand hopefully disney not disney they already have good leadership well except for at the top uh (laughs) hopefully dc can find the right guy soon hopefully dan lynn's happy all parties can move on um but yeah i think this just signals that we're moving to live events again which is for the best now, this normally wouldn't be a news topic for us, but it's that slow of a news week that we're going to talk about Top Gun Maverick in its 15th freaking weekend at the box office. Top Gun Maverick came in first place this weekend, and it made Jeez. a little over $7 million in its 15th weekend. Y'all, I don't God, think you dude. understand how big of a deal that is. I think there's a whole bunch of records that it set this week, not just being the first movie to ever like win in its 15th week, but also it's the first time a movie has been number one, both in theaters and in digital sales. Like it was the number one movie video on demand. Also, this is the first time a movie has been number one, the number one movie on Labor Day and Memorial Day. It, Which is insane. It's such a big gap. 15 weeks dude 15 that's like gosh dude that's just so crazy like i'm trying to do the math and i don't want to but like for obvious reasons because math it's because math oh duh but that's still like that's a that's several months at least at the bare minimum three 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 months (laughs) yes at least four (laughs) what oh (laughs) (laughs) 15 weeks that's like my big fat greek wedding on steroids so 
we've talked about before, My Big Factory Wedding basically debuted to not a whole lot and not a whole lot of theaters, but because of positive word of mouth, it really never, ever dropped off. It just kind of stayed level. It basically made the exact same amount of money each weekend consistently for basically like almost a third to half the year. It wasn't a lot, but if you just keep being consistent, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what Top Gun Mavericks being here is consistent. Now it is now the top is now in the top five highest grossing domestic movies of all time. I don't think it's moving up any more than that. Like the next possible spot is like a hundred million away at least. And now yeah. that it's on digital, I think it'll slow it down a little bit. That being said, it's I think it's got another at least thirty to forty million in the tank just because its only real competition now is a re-release of Avatar and a surprisingly low number for spider-man no way home more fun edition i thought that would do better it got like six million which is still fine for a re-release but given that spider-man is is spider-man it was a huge deal when it came out in december and it's, it's been gone for a little bit i thought that it might overtake top gun maverick this weekend but no cruise control means you're on top for a really really long time like this I, cruise control I like, get out of here <laughs> obviously i like this movie a lot more than josh but even josh and his cruise hatred and his cynicism and also so there's something about <laughs> on, this movie <laughs> i love this movie you're kidding me this I is a great movie just like, it's okay i mean it's yeah but i mean it's a great time and like I'm, i still think Cru- tom is the same person in every single film and i think that He's still the same person in this film. See, but... I'll argue that this movie is different because it's the first time, like, maybe ever he's not a perfect hero and he actually shows, like, emotion and growth That's... And when he's wrestling with okay. this whole concept of oh, balls. I'm aging out of what I'm supposed to do. Now, is that Maverick aging out of what he's thinks he's good at? Or is that Tom Cruise realizing, oh, crap, I can't be the action star forever. Maybe I need to transition into a mentor slash behind-the-scenes role. Hmm! It's almost like this movie's a metaphor for the old filmmaking techniques versus the new school techniques. Hmm. Um, this, even if you're not the biggest fan of Top Gun Maverick, this is history in the making. We will probably never see this success ever again in terms of just continued sustained energy at the box office. I, I love this movie. It's my favorite movie of the year, but even I'm still surprised checking the box office each week going still, you're still in the running. Nothing is phasing this. <laughs> Maybe it's just like you've got people on both sides of the aisle, both like right leaning and left leaning people just going, we meet in the middle because planes go fast. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I think the other thing this thing, movie's got for it is it, in my opinion, is way better than the first one. That's um, not it's hard. More, yeah, that's fair. But like, I think it's it's. It's more entertaining. I think I will never sit here and be like, oh, I was I thought it was OK. I don't know why people like this movie. Mm. Uh, no, Tom is actually pretty good. Miles Teller is fantastic. Literally, I normally everybody... hate Miles Teller. He's so good in Dude, this. I love is him in this. It. Killing it. Everybody's killing it in this movie. So to me, it's not really it's not a surprise but it is a surprise that this thing this thing has got as long of let well you know what no this movie is a metaphor for tom cruise in that it's like if if tom cruise always has those long running shots of like that never seem to end this is the this is the that that shot for for movie form like he's just gonna keep going and you know next thing we know it's top maverick top gun maverick will finally drop to number two in thanksgiving (laughs) Which would be I mean, insane. You watch Black, like Black Adam comes out end of October. Top Gun Maverick is still hanging in there against the rock. <laughs> See who the real movie star here is. It's just God. It's made so much money and I don't get it. I just think it's more ironic because the whole point of this movie was top was Tom Cruise just sticking to his guns gang saying, no, we will not release the stream. I don't care how far you have to delay this because this is supposed to come out like right as the pandemic was hit like at the mm-hmm. end of march 2020 or something like that and he's just like no i don't care how long you have to delay it we have that much faith in this movie and this needs to be seen on the big screen and paramount's probably going but that's gonna cost us money and tom's like trust me you will make more money if you wait 
And hey, guess what? <laughs> gosh dang it, Tom Cruise. You've got a weird religion, but when you're right, you're right. You're right. 1.4 <laughs> billion times right. Like, I Jeez. don't I don't get it. It's insane. Um, I think this will still have legs. It'll probably win this weekend unless Spider-Man gets some miraculous traction. There's no real competition, I don't think. Uh, don't worry, Darling is coming but i don't see that as a box office threat and also like what's the movie gonna do spit on top gun maverick <laughs> there go. I, was, I was like i was waiting for it i was like one of us is gonna make this joke someone's gonna make a, a spitting joke like this movie is just insane but don't worry man i'll fire you through email um like <laughs> gosh dude uh yeah they, I, I agree uh, paramount needed a movie like this to, to to really get put them back closer to the top um get to get the, give them some some mo- movement to maybe make some good films going forward so now we transition to not really news, but almost like a secondary um, secondary discussion topic because we really have nothing in D23 is, is this weekend. <laughs> so we're going with our D23 predictions and the well, return, is. the return of the tinfoil hat. It has been too long. It has been too long. So we are going to talk about what we think will be announced at this year's D23 Expo. I think from California, probably from California. Um, some things I feel pretty confident about. Others, what we do best, we're just going to take stabs in the dark like the Hobbit. Um, or was that Fellowship of the Ring, A Knife in the Dark? I think that was Fellowship. Um, either way, I don't know. It's like a two-hour panel, I think, for their films division. So, <laughs> So one hour for Marvel, one hour for everything else? I mean... <laughs> like... <laughs> Let's also just get this out of the way because it, it's me saying this. Yeah. Because yeah. Universal is opening a theme park down the street from them with Epic Universe, they're not going to announce any major park update whatsoever because they don't think it's a big deal. And then they will once again be caught with their pants down because they're freaking idiots. And then as soon as Epic Universe opens, oh, balls, a uh, fifth park, fifth park, fifth park, DEFCON 5, let's go. And then next thing you know, uh, Universal uh, announces a Lord of the Rings park, and then they're just going to have all of my money all the time. Um, <laughs> Man, it, I'm already going to have to drag Josh kicking and screaming off the How to Train Your Dragon kitty ride, and then he- drag <laughs> Heather off the Yoshi's kitty coaster okay. kicking and screaming. Okay, look, I'm just like, I'm just imagining a How to Train Your Dragon ride, but like what they do with like Green Gods or like, uh, uh, God, I couldn't handle that. I just don't know if I could handle that. Like emotionally, not even like I know I can physically handle it. I don't know. I've done my my coasters, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't throw up anyway. Um, <laughs> OK, so <laughs> but Disney 23. <laughs> so I have just general film stuff. I've got some Star Wars stuff yeah. and then I got some Marvel stuff. Yeah. Uh, the general film stuff. Indiana Jones 5. I think that's going under a lot of people's radar. That is still coming mm-hmm. out next year. If we do not get a teaser trailer. We will get the official title because for now it's yes. still just called Indiana Jones Five. So, and none of them are titled like sequel numbers. They're all called something great and epic. Even Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, terrible movie, great name. You need some of that like old pulpy <laughs> great adventure. Great band name. It is a great name. All of them have great names. <laughs> yeah, so this are, would be like are. Indiana Jones and the I don't know. Ark of Lost Time. I don't know. <laughs> Just throw something together. <laughs> and the grumpy old Harrison. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Search for Atlantis. Indiana um, Jones and we swear this is the last one. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the AAA card. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Ford Escape. <laughs> Hey, Indiana Jones and the, the Ford one. Fiat. <laughs> the, the, the Ford Escape. or uh, Ford Escort. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um what, what's the uh what would you uh indiana jones the es- escape from the the um escape from which mountain? home <laughs> which mountain no thank you i'm good we don't need that again um we've had enough uh uh rock um memes from that movie alone uh, yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah i i agree though like because i to be perfectly honest i completely forgot that 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 was happening as well until you just mentioned it um i i i think at the very least a title i'm i'd be surprised if we got a teaser 
um, or even a description of what the movie's about. So we'll, I'm sure they'll they'll say something. I'm sure it'll be on a Marvel style docket of like, look guys, this is what's coming out this year, and it'll just the be Indiana like Indiana Jones Cinematic Universe. We're gonna have a Marion <laughs> movie. We're gonna have a Nazi movie. Oh wait, <laughs> watch <laughs> watch them uh, uh, um, subtly tie uh, Brendan Fraser in with the with the Indiana Jones movies. All of a sudden, he starts showing up and and doing stuff with Indy. We're gonna have a Sean Connery. Indiana Jones prequel movie about him when he was a young man. Don't worry, he has an open fist. <laughs> oh man, I mm, Sean Connery like he's he's not he's, he's not dead. dead right? No. Yes, he is. All right. So anyway, um, that's he's really rolling sad in his the grave, la- Junior. Yeah, well, because it's really sad that the last movie he ever did was A League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh my yeah. gosh! But yeah, I, it, Indy is Indy is definitely gonna sneak under the radar on there. I, I'm not really. I need to look more into uh, as far as like what Pixar, the Pixar like animation studios Strange and stuff World like that. Will probably have a new trailer. Yeah, finally. Um, isn't there a? It was like an Elementals movie or something like that. Yeah, I think that's like that's like I Pixar or that something. Shows they like talk about it, but I think that's still a little bit off. Like late next year yeah. at the earliest. I think that's still kind of in the developmental phase or like concepting stage but i feel i feel mm-hmm. like i've seen some stuff about that uh, i've seen concept art but that's all i know there's no treasure planet there's not gonna be treasure planet because jpeg hates us you scratch it okay. off your list nope you know what i'm i'm caught i'm in going to the stars baby <laughs> like why not i i i'm gonna say that the d23 this year is the year they announce a live action treasure planet i'm gonna do it i'm, I'm saying it Oh. It happened once with Static Shock, and, and now I'm just a, I'm just addicted to it, man. <laughs> if if that happens in typical Josh fashion, they'll announce it like they did Static Shock, and then quietly cancel it a year or two later, Stop! like they did with no, Static Shock. My heart, my heart, don't do that to me. It's not canceled yet. It's not yet. No, it's not. It's still is happening. It's just on hold. It's on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like spam. Hey, don't knock spam. Spam's great. <laughs> we are off the rails today, dog. I don't... <laughs> besides spam, what else? Non. That's the. I'm trying to think of what else is that they've got going on. Yeah, same. Like any other thirty-something white dude, we only care about Star Wars and Marvel here. Uh oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't they like supposed to um announce some of the Star Wars stuff? So I have. Uh, I think we're gonna get our first trailer or teaser trailer for the Ahsoka series. Ah, uh, yeah. And, oh my gosh. And maybe official <laughs> casting for Ezra. Mm, I want to, I, I, I kind of, I think, they I might. think they're going to keep that. I think, cause no, 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 I remember this. I remember this. You and I are on opposite sides of the tent. You think they're going to hold, hold the, the Thrawn casting uh, back. And I think they're going to hold the Ezra casting back, which is uh, either way is a good direction to go. So, I'm at least one of them is going to be announced. I think if, if Ahsoka, if they don't show a trailer or they, they, they're at least going to have a panel or something like that for Ahsoka. Um, they are most likely going to announce either as Ezra and or Thrawn, but not both. Uh, yeah. I can see them doing one, but not both. Um, I think we'll get some more information about the acolyte show that's coming about like that set like a hundred years before Phantom Menace. Very good possibility of a teaser or an official release date for season three of The Mandalorian. I believe that's Let's go. done finish. I think that's done filming. Um, but I think the done big, finished. I think <laughs> the big headline news that will close out the Star Wars section is Taiko T coming on stage and talking mm-hmm. very briefly about his Star Wars movie, supposedly coming out next year, and he'll confirm that it's set in the High Republic era. I don't think they're going to talk extensively about it because I think he's still in the scripting process, but I expect him to come out and talk about the Star Wars movie at least. Um, I had a friend of ours reach out to me recently. He's just like, so I didn't see it in Thor Love and Thunder. Do you think that movie's negative reception could impact Taika Waititi's standing in Lucasfilm going, every director has a bad day at the office, but knowing Kathleen Kennedy, oh, you made a bad movie? Get out! Just like Carl Trevorrow <laughs> in The Book of Henry. Get out! No, I, I think Taika is... is Disney's well, indebted and... to Taika for a while, so... 
Yeah. Well, and I, I still haven't seen it yet, so you know I could be eating these words here. It comes out later bit. this week for Disney Plus Day. Well, I'm probably gonna end up watching it because of that. Uh, but to me, I did see some people say they enjoyed it. It wasn't their favorite, but they didn't mind it. That that you know what I mean. So I think it's not. It's it's not a quote unquote bad movie. It's just not yes. as good yes, it is. as the other one. So no, but that's I'll, again if you all like me it, not saying it. Cool. Uh now that I've had time to marinate on it, Thor Love and Thunder is probably my least favorite Marvel movie. Over and even over Captain Marvel, more than Dark World. I I genuinely hate this movie. It just <laughs> It's like watching bad stand up for two hours. Just watching somebody that you that you actually like just die on stage for two hours. It's so uncomfortable Jeez. to watch. Jeez. All right. Well, I will watch it when it comes out for Disney Day or whatever, and I will uh, let you know what I actually think of it. Okay. Marvel stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, now let's talk about the stuff we're actually here for. <laughs> what do you got? Um. I'm calling right. I think the obvious ones are they're going to announce X Men X Men stuff, and they're going to probably do castings, casting announcements for Fantastic Four. Mm. Do you have any guesses for the cast? I think John Krasinski is not going to be Doctor Reed. I completely agree. We sucker Jen like good clickbait. I don't think Krasinski will be involved in Fantastic Four. And I don't I believe the rumors though. either, though, that that dude from You Netflix's You will be Mister Fantastic either. I don't. Oh think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they've done a better job of hiding it. Um. Also, let's just get out in front of this now. Whoever they cast for Mister Fantastic, whether it's Krasinski or not. Let's just chill the F out and let it play out. Like, yeah. <laughs> let's not freak the crap out whether it is or whether it's not. If it's not Krasinski, man, why did they get insert name of actor here? He's not nearly as good as John Krasinski. Or if they do get John Krasinski, how did they get John Krasinski? He was terrible in Multiverse of Madness. He's going to be terrible in this yeah. role. Like, oh my gosh. Guys, Sarah Finn, the casting director for Marvel, does not miss. Just, just. Trust the process in basketball terminology here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I, I think yeah. we will get Fantastic Four casting. Um, we will get official confirmation that Matt Shackman is the one directing it. That he'll come out on stage and introduce all the cast. He'll also introduce Doctor Doom, whoever that will be. I think Doctor Doom will be officially announced because, you know, according to rumors, we might see him before the end of the year, but those are just rumors that I don't know if I fully believe or not. But... <laughs> <laughs> the big haymaker from the Fantastic Four. Yeah. They're going to announce Mole Man for the Fantastic <laughs> Four movie. I'm sticking to my guns. Mole Man will be in the Fantastic Four movie. It's going to happen. <laughs> you, I think you you casted it, and now I've had it in my head for this long. Danny I think DeVito. They're going to they're gonna do... Uh, Danny, sure, Danny DeVito is Mole Man, but only if I get Seth Rogen as thing. <laughs> it's I, in time. <laughs> but there is like an interesting story to be told there i think it's like so you have this ben is not like you're gonna have to obviously change some of ben's origin a little bit but like he maybe make him into somebody who's always wanted to be strong and he so by him becoming the thing he gets what he wants he's he but there's that offset of like yeah i got everything i wanted and now i'm hideous to look at <laughs> like yeah that would suck uh but uh but yeah i think casting for definitely for fantastic four um how much x-men stuff do you think we're gonna get because i don't I, think it's gonna be a whole lot i don't think it'll be a lot if either maybe there's two slots in between uh kang dynasty and secret wars i could see one of those two slots being something x-men related maybe the mutants or like a standalone for a lesser known X Men that isn't like Wolverine or um, Cyclops, like a lesser known character that they can introduce later, or like an X Force, or they very very like if I had to bet anything that would be announced at D twenty three, Deadpool three officially being on the docket because we've already known that that one's been pretty far along in development yeah. and also. The events of Deadpool 2 set up a potential crossover very, very easily, and Ryan Reynolds as a character could translate incredibly well. 
If you want to pop the crowd, though, you have Sean Levy and Ryan Reynolds come out, officially give a release date for Deadpool 3, and say, co-starring Hugh Jackman. I would kill however, myself right there. He, I can't. However, no. Hugh Jackman is not playing Wolverine. He's playing <laughs> Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah 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 all right i'm, I'm, I'm about it sure and like <laughs> sure you can have deadpool look at the camera at one point hey guys this is about as close as we could get so i met you halfway come see the movie <laughs> type of thing hugh, hugh hugh is not in any kind of like like jack shape at all he's just like nah bro i've been Ever since I, I've finished, I, I've been I'm the music you know, eating, man. <laughs> I've been on my couch eating bonbons, bro. Like, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> like, you smell that. Oh, dude. It's sugar. That'd be great, honestly. Um, I would, I think if we're going to go like quote unquote small time uh, characters, I would love a like a Nightcrawler film. I think would work really well there because of his history with a lot of the villains in in the x-men universe and to me that works really well um do you want to really lean hard into this story that you know the overarching theme that is mutants of like just because you're different you're bad um i think nightcrawler is an ex- excellent one to, to kind of start with you know like he's got at he's an interesting character his ties with mystique would be interesting um even just like having it having him start in i think it's romania i believe that's where they i believe that's where he's it's it's over there and those like it's over those, there i i don't know like i want to say like like romania bulgaria or something like that but that doesn't sound right that doesn't it might that doesn't sound right when i say it i guess uh but it'd be interesting to like have that film happen with nightcrawler and then when it ends it's him finally getting to the u.s from running from his from that town and he like you know comes off a boat or what have you and the first person that meets, meets him is bavaria what is, I thought that was like a like a donut. Like That's a Bavarian. pretzel, genius. Yeah, Bavarian cream donut. No, okay. I think anyway. Bavarian style pretzel. No, okay, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think it'd be interesting though, like to have him like the end of that film. Like maybe that's you don't even mention the X Men. Maybe you just do Nightcrawler, and the film ends or the TV show ends with um, him coming to America, and whatever version of Xavier meets him there on the dock or whatever. That, which could be like that's super hype. Are you kidding me? Like, like just having mutants already be a thing but be in the background and being underground like that to me that works really really well and it because of course if you introduce them out of quote unquote out of nowhere all of us fans are going to be go all eternals on them and be like yo but where were <laughs> where were you when all this stuff was happen happening so there's a lot of questions that they're going to need to be answered unfortunately and i do not envy the position that marvel is in when it comes to figuring out how do you without going time travel or some kind of world altering uh event uh, how do you introduce the X-Men and be like, no, they've been here all along. So I'm starting to think that they haven't been here all along, but their universes yep. is about to collide with ours and maybe hard reset some stuff at the end of phase six. I can see that. Um, speaking of which, I think they're, we got all of phase five at Comic-Con. I think we're going to get all of phase six at D23, which could potentially be movies like The Eternals 2, Doctor Strange 4, no, Doctor Strange 3, uh, maybe Thor 4. But most importantly, Shang-Chi 2. And if the, rum- yeah, baby. if the rumors are true, it might be called Shang-Chi and the Wreckage of Time. And I'm going, I'm on, I'm on board with that. However, I'll put a caveat on there. I know Dustin Dindal Cretton, the director of Shang-Chi, is doing the Wonder Man series. And he's also doing Kang Dynasty. I think because of those, he's dropping out of Shang-Chi 2 and handing it off to somebody else. And they will say whoever is directing the second Shang-Chi movie, just because Dustin Daniel Cretton is going to be very busy with other projects. I think Kang Dynasty is going to be a very big project. And as much as I love what he did in Shang-Chi, I don't want his, I want his full attention on one project at a time. Like, just yeah. take it incrementally. I want Kang Dynasty to be as good as possible. I want Shang-Chi 2 to be as good as possible. 
So Wreckage of Time is the rumored name that we heard. Uh, I also still do not hate Shang-Chi and the Iron Fist. Yeah, or... I thought <laughs> when you were like, I've heard the rumor. I thought you were going to be like, yeah, it's a legend of Iron Fist. It was like, you started that rumor. No, like, you no. started that rumor. I did. That's why I didn't say <laughs> me. I said the Wreckage of Time. Now, here's something I'm just going to throw out there. As a standalone movie, a la Captain America Civil War, we might get um, Marvel's Battle World just as its own separate thing as either Disney Plus series or its own standalone movie like Captain America Civil War or the Thunderbolts movie of much larger consequence before a bigger thing. Like, put ba a Battle World project to introduce the concept of it before we get to Secret Wars, which, if you don't know, Battle Wars is basically all the universes collide and just dump the toy box out and have characters from different universes fight each other. I I see that being a surprise project. I don't know. I have no basis for that, but I can absolutely see a Battle World project. I have basis. All right, ready? So if they're gonna, <laughs> this is this is it's just the 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 meme of Charlie Day like being like. Having all like all of the all the stuff on the on the on the on the window, right? So Battle World is started uh, by a very specific and like started and run by a very specific person, being Doctor Doom. So um, you know, you want to introduce him there first. Uh, I have nothing against that at whatsoever. Uh, and and you know, assuming of course he doesn't show up before then. <laughs> now, lastly, the last prediction. That I'll have is, I think, what's going to close out the Marvel section. Destin Daniel Cretton is directing Kang Dynasty. I think we'll get confirmation of who is directing Secret Wars. Mm. I don't think it's the Russo brothers. I know people keep asking them, and they're just like, yeah, that would be one of the projects that we would come out of retirement for, or Marvel retirement, you know, away from their crappy Netflix movies. I'm sorry. They just, they're not great. Um, I don't think it's the Russos. I honestly don't even really have a name that'll stick to Secret Wars, but I think we'll get the director for Secret Wars announced. Mm -hmm. I don't see it being Taika Waititi. Ooh. You know what would be cool? Bring it full circle. John Favreau directing Secret Wars. He directs, yeah, I, I... He directs the first, and he directs the last. Yeah, I have nothing against that whatsoever. I'm down. Let's go, John. 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 John's John. Like it's a, not the John, John people were expecting. John. John. John, John. <laughs> it's not the John people were expecting, but it's the John we deserve. <laughs> but that, that's assuming he's uh, not going to be busy with Star Wars projects or anything like that. Oh, if so, he's busy whoa. with Star Wars projects. I'm not complaining. <laughs> that is true. This week's episode, as per usual, is sponsored by T Public, your one stop shop for all things Uncharted Media merch, whether it's t shirts, mugs, stickers, whatever you want with the Uncharted Media logo on it. Go support the show at T Public. Also, help us get to 700 subscribers before the end of the year on YouTube so we can talk about Darth Jar Jar at the end of the year and <laughs> share the love with all your fellow movie fans. If you haven't already, subscribe to some whatever audio platform you're listening to it's on, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or YouTube. Now, in light of the recent re-release of No Way Home, the more fun edition, put big air quotes around more fun edition, it, it's still a great movie. It's just, I don't know about more fun. Uh, we thought we'd take a look at extended edition slash director's cuts, because at least to me, there is a difference between extended mm -hmm. cuts Correct. and director's cuts. Director's cuts usually are a director going these are scenes i wanted to put in but either due to time or the studio we just didn't put them in so we're putting them in for the home release extended cuts i view much more cynically if the studio wanted a re-release or a second option of the blu-ray to be able to sell to people like a team for some reason has an <laughs> extended cut do i watch the extended cut every time absolutely can i tell you what the difference in between that and the theatrical version is Heck no, I have no idea what the difference is, but I'll always watch the extended cut because it's the extended cut and Lord of the Rings has conditioned me that the extended cut is always better, whether that's actually true or not. <laughs> yeah, and like, I think that's the thing to kind of like the benchmark, obviously, and as much as I don't like, like them is Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit films, mm -hmm. I think because the Hobbit but does Lord of the Rings. 
I know, the, but not the Hobbit, the Hobbit. At, least, at the very least, still adds a lot of t- of of stuff. It is not. I'm not saying it's good, but it <laughs> they add but a lot at of least, stuff. It might not be but, good, well, but like they to, add to, stuff. To me, if you're going to call it an extended extended cut, you need an, at least an extra hour. To me, there's no reason to re-release stuff with a bunch of like a bunch of new scenes if it's just going to be like, oh yes, you know how our movie was two hours? Well, now it's two hours and fifteen minutes. Like that's not worth my time. That's not worth re. re- well, I can see how it would would be real, well, financially worth it to re-release something with an extended cut. But because then. The, the the one thing I've never understood about director's cuts, and it's like I get it. There's reasons, I guess, I'll, I'll, alternatively, as to why a director would cut certain scenes. But like at the same time, for your, it's your movie. <laughs> like, was it not cut the way you wanted the first time? I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't. You know what yes, I mean? Like, that's very possible. Yeah, I mean, which is like that that we have to bring up, of course, Zack Snyder and um. Uh, Josh, Josh, we- Josh, 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 Josh Whedon. I hate, I can never say his name right. Josh Whedon. Um, I mean, I guess like that, that's a very like it is special circumstance, a very interesting circumstance to say the least. Um, so let's have that conversation then. Um, do you, cause I think you and I have been on record already saying about this, but do you, do you feel like the uh, Snyder cut was worth it once uh, forgetting all of the build up to it and the reasons why we got it? Do you think at the end of the day that it was worth having that exist? So here's the thing about not just the Snyder cut, but Snyder in general, Snyder is the king of the extended cut. I think Man sure. of Steel is the only movie of his that I can think of that doesn't have some form of like in extended cut or director's cut watchman for the love of god has like four different cuts or versions i don't understand but like batman versus superman has the ultimate cut you got the Zack snyder's justice league you got watchman i feel like 300 has an extended cut i can't remember pretty sure um, it does but it's something about that that either Zack snyder constantly gets studio interference or he's got george lucas syndrome of constantly want to tinker with his own stuff Mm-hmm. Getting back to your question about Zack Snyder's Justice League. I think you and I both are in agreement that it is a much better version than what we got in theaters. Mm-hmm. That being said, streaming was always its most viable option given its four hour runtime. Like, yes. people be like, well, what about the Lord of the Rings trilogy? When they came out originally, the theatrical cut of Lord of the Rings did not debut the extended editions. Every once in a while, you can catch the extended editions in theaters. Like, there's a showing of that either sometime this month or next month, and I'm pissed that I'm working that day. Uh, But you can see the extended cut in theaters now, but for, like, special events. I don't think this four-hour cut of Justice League would have done particularly well at the box office given its runtime like streaming is the perfect platform for it even home video with like collectors of like buy it after the fact that it's come out and you watch it on your own time with like bathroom breaks or whatever else like you do with the extended cut was it worth it i don't know because it is so hard to take out all the external factors with it of that's true especially it, all the stuff that's coming out come out since then yeah how much it split the fandom and how much it might not have actually paid off for the company in terms of just like how much money they sunk into it didn't really pay off in terms of subscriber numbers. In terms of overall quality, yes, it's a huge step. And I'm almost like, Josh and I have never been the biggest fan of Zack Snyder, but I would rather him make Zack Snyder Justice League and end it there than have him come back and potentially tarnish what he's made. Like, while I'm not the biggest fan of his style, given now what we got with Zack Snyder's Justice League, I think his trilogy is a it's solid i still hate batman versus superman with every fiber of my being but take that out two out of the three ain't bad do i still have issues with man of steel absolutely i have some issues with it but i can still very much enjoy it and his Zack snyder chess league is very good but to say that the the Zack snyder's chess league is so drastically different than the theatrical cut i think might be a bit excessive it's definitely more snyderish but the story and a lot of the key elements are still the same he just got a lot less of joss whedon's overtly perviness in the movie um i was more surprised by how much stuff was still in the movie i'm going oh that was actually a snyder thing interesting uh but 
Snyder Cut, we think, was a good version of an extended cut, but that's not always the case. Like I said, No Way Home as a movie is great, but the more fun edition was definitely a cash grab, and I think at times, like, movies re-releasing in theaters with extra footage definitely comes across as that. Every once in a while, you can get actually more out of a movie, but... I don't know. I'm I'm sometimes cynical when it comes to extended or director's cuts that they're not actually what they're supposed to be. No, oh, yeah, no, I completely agree. I mean, I'm I'm all I'm kind of that way about any time any movies quote unquote re released into theaters. Like, oh, okay, cool. So you just want more money? Got it. Okay, cool. And like, legitimately, that's how I feel every time that that Avatar is re released in theaters. Like, oh, okay, cool. So what? You just are you running low? And so you need to, you need, yeah, oh, that's a, that's a well, we Avengers can always Endgame go back getting to, too close to your number. Yeah, exactly. So you can always, you know, go back and redip and that, which to me, it's like, how does that count for your overall? Like, that's not fair. Like you just continuously re-release a film and just up its, uh, it's, you know, total gross. Like that just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but it is what it, it extended cuts. I think. So let, let's talk about this then what makes an extended gut cut worth it because let's let's use lord of the rings as that benchmark because there's like what an extra two hours of footage and storytelling in in the extended cut movies i think it goes up every time yeah i think it's like an extra hour and a half in fellowship like two hours in in um two towers and like almost three hours in uh in return of the king no that sounds Uh, excessive that that's i feel like it's Maybe not three, but it's, but it's over two. I know that. It's, it's, not an extra hour, two. it's not over two hours of extra footage. I'm going to look it up. Keep, keep talking. Okay, because I could have... Like my point being, though, is there's a lot of extra stuff in, in there. In both ones. I could have sworn. Maybe, I mean, granted, I looked it up when I was like 15, 16 or whatever. All right. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Um, extended Edition. The extended Lord of the Rings trilogy is about 11 hours and 22 minutes long. That means... Oh, what? Okay, Lord of the Rings extended edition contains a total of 2 hours and 5 minutes of extra film to the trilogy. So you're right, okay, and so... it was about 2 hours, but for okay, the whole it's thing, all it's not them. 2 okay, hours that... per movie. That's still... Uh, that's Okay, that's fair. That that that, that, that makes more sense Josh in my head. Josh is only because... terrible with numbers, though, let's be honest. I mean, yeah, but like that also would, would have... It, now thinking about it in retrospect, it was like, that would have made uh, Return of the King like a 5-hour movie, and it is definitely not a 5-hour movie, uh, <laughs> depending on how long how long those uh, 5 endings feel make you feel. And I love um, all of them, dang it! I did, they're all worth you that's the problem i think one. though is like all all five of them are needed like you can't just not do them and so like it, it kind of yeah anyway uh that being said i have vivid memories of being sick and the only version of the fellowship of the ring that was available for me to watch was the theatrical cut and i was like oh yeah this will be marginally the same um and it was not it was like jarring how different it was. And I guess part of that is just because like I've always watched the extended cut when I watched Lord of the Rings. So I guess the, the to circle back to the question, what makes an extended cut, you know, good or worth it or, you know, in, in a in a movie watching capacity, what, what makes that OK for for people to for them to release um, extended cuts? I'm, I'm currently looking it up of movies that. Honestly, why are there extended cuts? Like I brought up the yeah. team. I love it. But why is an extended cut or like an extended cut of Steve Carell's Get Smart? I think that's one of those times of just like, is this an extended cut or is this you just throwing in deleted scenes because or <sighs> let's bring up my arch enemy, Russell Crowe's yep. Robin Hood. Yeah. That, that has an extended edition because I couldn't suffer enough. They decide, you know, let's add more to this misery. I refuse to watch the extended cut. I don't care if it's supposedly better. Like, I don't think that's a movie that necessarily needs it. Now we go back to Snyder. Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice has the ultimate edition. I think that cut is better but I don't think the movie's still particularly good. There's still a lot of that movie that could be distilled further and not be three hours and you still get to the point a lot better. 
it's it's a matter of does the extended or the director's cut drastically change it or bring anything new to the table a la halloween six let's talk that the quote-unquote director's cut or the producer's cut you have to watch one of the two and those are drastically different movies i don't know if i consider those extended cuts because they're about the same but those are two drastically different movies in terms of tone and style and magic usage we'll say that um hmm. so that's one of those that's just like does this benefit? Does it hurt it? 1408 has like three different endings. Um, it, I Extended cuts are always tricky to me, and especially director's cuts. It's like, is this, is this needed? And, and I don't know where to really draw the line at times for that. No, I mean, that's fair. Because I think, again, going back to our benchmark, like Lord, Fellowship of the Ring feels like anything that is added is needed like it's not like they're just adding stuff like they're just adding deleted scenes or anything like that like some a lot of the scenes adding that they added into the fellowship of the ring is like it adds to the mood adds to the to the sense of adventure or um you know adds to the world building and i i, I think and maybe it's very very specific to the fantasy genre but to me like being having more time to world build to have, get that sense of adventure that like is is it absolutely that, that's very 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 much needed um so i guess the question is why couldn't that have been the the cut to begin with because it's who who makes that decision because to, to me it's the the director but like then again, that's not necessarily how movies work. They're just directing the film. The producers kind of are more about like the tone and what are we doing with this film and where are we going with the story and all that. So really, like a producer's cut makes a little bit more sense. But like the director's cut is very confusing to me because it's yeah, like you cut the film. Like <laughs> how I had a. Well, well, I'm waiting for the editor's cut or the sound design guy's cut. Like, like Tim, like where do you stop once you say the director's or the producer's cut? Like, let's get let's get somebody else in here. Hey, the, you know the, this is Daniel Radcliffe's Grant Radcliffe's version of the of the Harry Potter films. Oh like, my gosh, I would watch that in a heartbeat. You know you would too. It's just got frenetic energy, completely different takes. Oh, uh, dude, it could be fun. Yes, but like, how much money do you put into that? Uh, why do you do that other than to do a meme like uh, granted you know sony f f already fell for a meme with morbin time but like uh, still like uh, i guess movie movie studios aren't known for doing <laughs> for like hey you guys know well okay i say that no i say movies are known for doing memes when uh movie 43 exists and that is clearly an inside joke between a bunch of producers <laughs> It's a good thing you bring up Movie 43 because I don't know why this was a trend and you still kind of see it to this day. Something that absolutely does not need extended editions and I will go lean more on the cash grab side than a good thing side is why do comedies have extended cuts? You see that all the time of be like the extended cut or the unrated cut of like it'll have one or two jokes in it that weren't in the theatrical version. Definitely not particularly great jokes, but they're just like, it's a different version. Like Anchorman yeah. has an unrated version. Not a better it's... version. <laughs> it's just no. It's just another version. Um, or what's it? Um uh, Euro Trip has an unrated extended edition. Like all these like raunchy two thousands comedies. Forgetting Sarah Marshall has an extended edition. Like, is it actually or is it like 30 seconds of ad additional ad-libbing jokes that the actors thought were funny that the director just tacked on to make another version. In that situation, I lean more towards cash grabs. I don't know if that's still a trend that goes today. I haven't really noticed it, but we still get some extended editions as Jurassic World, um, was it Dominion is the one that came out this year? When that mm -hmm. just came on home video, that has an extended edition, and Colin Trevorrow is very much just going... Friends, don't let friends watch the theatrical version of Dominion. I'm going, so what happened on the production of your movie then? Yeah. Um, 
Okay, sure. Did you get a little pissed off Duel of the Fates storyline going in here? Like you almost did for episode 9? I, comedy, I don't get why they have extended editions, but they were very much a 2000s thing. At, mm -hmm. at, maybe people thought it's edgier and funnier because dumb. <laughs> I just, I, yeah, I, for comedies, it doesn't make sense, I think, because unless you're going to like, so I guess the question here is this, then extended cuts, what's your minimum requirement of time? Like, hey, we added 10 minutes to this film. To me, it's not, a, but, it's not a time thing. It is, is there actual quality that's being added fair. to this movie that either enhances or adds to my film going experience? Like Lord of the Rings, they're adding stuff and adding elements that get me more invested in the story and in the characters as much as i'm not a big fan of Zack snyder and i don't like batman versus superman i will prefer the ultimate cut because there are certain scenes and elements that add to that story i may not like the story but i appreciated some chunks that were taken out of the theatrical version that added to the experience more so with the extended cut of like clark actually being a reporter and tying up some loose story threads in the extended cut that were not there in the theatrical version. I think you just need to bring substance to a theatrical version for it to not be a blatant cash grab. Um, which I mean, that's, that's fair though, because um, I mean, it's not technically an extended cut or anything like that, but like, let's talk about the, the descent and that there's two versions of the descent five. I, I'm not going to go either way of what you, whether you like the, the turn or not, but five minutes can absolutely change a film. The just the five a five minute extra scene absolutely completely changes the descent depending on which version you're watching. So I I think I'm gonna go with I'm gonna kind of be with you on that. It's not necessarily about how much time. It's about the quality of the scene, but which then still brings up the question: If it's a quality scene, why did they get cut? If it still works, because why did it get cut? Because as much as directors have control, the guys paying the bills, ultimately, or pay, the guys paying the bills, or dumb as crap audience members that go, this scene is dragging a little bit. Shut up, Kevin. You don't know what story pacing is. You get some idiots in test viewings that just go, oh man, I'm going to take this joke right from David F. Sandberg. Oh man, why why didn't that guy have more turtles? What? Yeah, you heard me. He needs more turtles than in the studio panics and throws more turtles into the scene. Like, oh, okay, the weird dude with the turtles asks for, asks for more turtles in the scene. And then us audience goes, what's with the turtles? So I won't always blame the director on things. That's fair. Of Could have been studio interference. It could have been really stupid people in test audiences seeing stuff that thought that they were helping. Because if someone asks you for input on something... You don't actually have anything to say, and you're like, oh, it's good. But someone else has some criticism. You don't want to be the idiot there with your thumb up your butt going, oh, I thought it was fine. No, there needs to be something that needs to be changed with it. So it, there's a lot of factors as why movies end up the way that they do. Um, speaking of movies ending up the way they do, let's talk about an infamous director's cut. We got one of them with Snyder Cut. Someone asked recently, will we ever get an air cut? Then what will now be the most famous what if? Since we got Zack Snyder's Justice League, I think the, now the most famous what if will be a David Ayer's Suicide Squad. I don't think we're ever getting it for a multitude no, of reasons. No. Um, different management at Warner Brothers. Uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League did not pay off financially as much as they were hoping it would, except for some really pretty solid home video sales. Uh, but it didn't help the streaming numbers as much as they thought. Uh, the further divide in the fan base. David Ayer wanting to move on from DC, uh, that that era of DC just being moved on. But that brings the question of if it was possible, is that something that gets brought up? And how different do we think that director's cut of Suicide Squad would be from what we actually got? Yeah, because the, you start to have that try to have that conversation. Okay, cool. So what do you change? What do you add? Because ultimately, a lot of the problems with that film were, well, the Joker was there for no reason. So do you add more Joker scenes or do you take the Joker scenes out? You know what I mean? So it's like, so what, what, what do you, what, what's your, what problems? I, maybe that's the question that we haven't been asking is like, to me, extended cuts are the answer to a question of like, okay, 
this was missing or this was a problem so we can fix that um you know Zack snyder's problem was that this was not the vision i wanted for the film so therefore i'm going to recut justice league so that it's more closer to my vision okay that's fine lord of the rings added an extended cut because you know what we need to more to delve in more into this world building we need to kind of get more of that sense of adventure let's dive into more more of that okay cool that's fine but like stuff like yeah what 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 do you add why would you add an extended cut for a team what more do you need to add to it a while it is a solid film what more do you want to add for to a just a regular you know paint by numbers for the most part actions action movie like what you know what i mean like so what to me extended cuts i have to be an answer to a question and if there's no question why have an extended cut i think also people need to realize we're grown adults here so you're allowed to snicker, but we're going to try and keep this sentence as professional as possible. The yeah, longer isn't that. always better when it comes to movies. Um, movies sometimes can be trimmed down and be better for it. There's yes. definitely some scenes, some movies that we've seen and it's like, eh, they should have cut this. So I think just because you can get an extended cut doesn't make it a better movie because they added certain scenes. Sometimes, like I said with No Way Home, they added stuff for No Way Home, but it was stuff that kind of drags the pace or changes scenes a little bit, makes it not flow as smoothly to me or distracts from the main story. And I think that's a big thing of sometimes with extended cuts, you get scenes that don't particularly add anything. They're just scenes that you go, I can understand why this was on the cutting room floor of like whenever you'd go through dvd bonus features and see delete scenes be like this character does some chores or this character walks in the house you're like yeah i could i could see why this was cut it'll be like a random scene of nothingness but then an extended edition that'll show up i do it's sometimes it's okay for a movie to be trimmed down i would like to see the opposite sometimes for movies of the slim down version of something like a oh what was it the despecialized version of the prequels of the chopped off oh, some yeah. stuff um they made the runtime shorter they rearranged some scenes those type of projects i would like to see more of someone did that with obi-wan this the disney plus series of uh, they trimmed it down to a two and a half hour movie they added some music they tweaked some dialogue here and there they added more flashbacks that made a much more cohesive story. So I would kind of would like the anti extended cut from time to time of movies that were long that good are good, but could be improved by slimming some stuff down or taking some stuff out and replacing it with another scene or little lines of dialogue here and there to add clarity. That doesn't happen very often, but I think that could be just as interesting as director's cut. I think something to that is very similar to this is having directors come back to projects and seeing if they what they would change a la during lockdown. So if that's Stallone did that re-release mm, of Rocky Four. Yeah. That's definitely a director's cut of uh it's Rocky Four, Rocky versus Drago. Don't get me wrong, I love the theatrical version of Rocky Four. It's one of my favorites in the entire franchise. But the new version that he cut also is a drastically different movie, but still a really good movie. It's definitely a director's cut of it. There's more footage at the beginning the whole reason for the fight is different it's less america versus russia which it's still kind of there but it's much more of apollo's pride and ego is what got him killed which was kind of hinted at a little bit in the original version but not as as much as it is in this director's cut of um i am terrified of not being in a spotlight anymore i would rather die in the ring than live a lonely man without the sun on me type of thing um, and I think that's much more powerful. I think that comes with age and maturity as from Sylvester Stallone as a filmmaker. So I would like to see other filmmakers kind of take that approach of here's something I did in my past. Here's how I would do it nowadays or like even kind of just tweaking some stuff. I think that would be a really interesting experiment to see. Yeah, it's really funny to think about how like. How Sylvester took that time to, you know, tell a more mature story and be more mature in his storytelling. Uh, and then is complaining about 
uh, <laughs> uh, who, uh, the Rocky the franchise Korean, being in yeah, terrible like, condition. Like, what do you stop? Like, stop. Okay. And to, the to, dude so that made the, Rocky Five. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, like get out of here, dude. Um, yeah, I, I feel like that would be way more interesting. Um, super cuts of movies would be very, very interesting. Uh, although you do get those jokes in on on YouTube, where it's like, "All right, the entire uh, Star Wars series in five seconds, go!" Like that and would Anakin be Anakin complained. Yeah, <laughs> it, it basically most of the story. Um, yeah, I definitely think like trimming down films like while i lo- i love a good two to three hour movie where they just go into all details but like it's the same it's the thing that i think you and i have have been saying especially now that i've read the books a a three hour cut of harry potter that's more like the book is not better at all it will it like I love a lot of the little details, but honestly, there's a lot of changes that they make in the movies that, and I think this is like, I've said this back to back, like two episodes now, but like, there's a lot of changes that they make in the movie for the better. I'm so glad we don't get all the weird stuff between Harry and Cho where he's like, Oh, like, I just like her. I don't know why she's so upset. And she's like, well, you're not, you're not Cedric. So it's like, Oh, okay, I mean, we all feel here. that man. I mean, we feel that, but like to literally because tell you're an not 11- Robert Pattinson. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, I mean, but this is like, eh, chill dude. This is, this is twilight Pattinson. So that, mm, no, he did this before <laughs> twilight. He did this before. He, I, I, I know he I'm did aware. This before he became my chemical Batman. <laughs> yes. But I like, I, I agree though with you that, you know, longer's Welcome not always to the better. Bat parade. Stop. Stop. That's uh, no, that, that welcome to the bat parade. That's uh, that, I was trying to make a tie into uh uh oh geez uh, uh that Avenge Sevenfold song Back Country, but uh, that doesn't that doesn't really there's not a lot of, I, I can do there. Uh, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> now that I've completely thrown Josh off course, yeah, I, I'm like I'm like puns puns puns. Got to come up with the puns puns puns. <laughs> oh man, yeah. No, I, just, I think longer's not always better. Uh, like it, it, for example, example. Let, let's take Maverick. Um. That's a trip. tight two hours right there. Very tight. You, do, I don't think you can add anything or really should add anything. Um, I don't think you take anything away either. I think it is perfectly paced. It is perfectly like story beats are boom, 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 exactly where you need them to be. And I mean, obviously it shows it's in its 15th week. So I, I don't see like uh, to me like that you don't have to i think this kind of goes back to like the 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 restrictions of like no sorry you're an action movie we, we need you to be an hour and a half it's like okay you're a horror cool. movie. you need to be an hour and 40 minutes yes no you can't you're not allowed to be two hours not allowed to be less like because like could you imagine if like john wick five is an hour long and that's it <laughs> Like if they were tight on it and like they were like boom 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 like how like John goes here, John John goes here, here's why, boom, gay, go, boom. Like I don't feel like uh, movies are weird because sometimes depending on the film, you, you can feel when a movie is like, no, we need to hurry up and get to this section of the story. And you're like, okay, cool, because you immediately feel feel once you get to that point you feel when the movie slows down and you go oh okay cool 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 we're here now we're telling the story we're chilling after 15 minutes of breakneck pace we now can like digest the thing that you're showing me on screen also the other thing to keep in mind is movies are made to be seen usually movies are made to be seen by the most amount of people Sure, maybe you might like a specific movie's extended cut better than a theatrical cut. Don't know if that would do necessarily better than the theatrical version with the general audiences. Like, they've got to have something for the casuals, but then for the diehards. Like, does that make sense of just, like... Yeah, you got to have something, like, for my mom and dad to watch that's still a solidly cohesive movie, but if I wanted more to be able to watch an extended cut of something, like, 
I like deleted scenes, but sometimes you don't need deleted scenes for the better movie. But if there's cinephiles out there that would like it, have it as an option. But sometimes you don't. It, it's a hard balance. Yeah, I think. It, it, it is because like I, in, if I'm being truthful with myself, um, I don't know if I would have seen Lord of the Rings in theaters if it if it was right off the bat three hours plus. Exactly. You know what I mean? I would, I especially, I mean, yeah, it's a little different because, you know, age wise, I wouldn't have seen it in the theaters at all. But like, um, you know, that, that kind of like brings to my mind, though, like another movie that's perfectly paced is that first um, Narnia movie, that first of uh, the Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe. That's perfectly a long paced. movie, too. That's like two and a half it, hours. Yeah, it's perfectly paced, though. It takes us time. It tells us, brings you into the world. So, like, I, I think there's there's a lot of factors but I think at the end of the day, I think you and I are both of the consensus. I don't think everything needs an extended cut. And I don't think everything needs a director's cut. Um, I know like us people that love movies, we'd love to see like the alternate versions. It's almost like being on YouTube and watching people t- do alternate takes on films uh, like belated the rest in peace, belated media re- rewriting the entire oh, prequel gosh. series. That was fantastic. But like it's inspiration I think, for one or two videos that I'm aware of. Yes, absolutely. Um, but like at the same time, like I don't know if we need that in movie form. I don't know if we need someone to go back and rewrite everything for us in movie form. So I, that that definitely feels like more like a research paper <laughs> than, than anything else. And I, I think that's okay. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, I think extended cuts are nice. They're not always necessary. They're not always good. I think you kind of have to take it on a case by case basis. But then again, you can kind of say it was just about every movie. Mm-hmm. And if you like True. some extended cut, but not another, whatever boat your float. Well, what do you guys think? <clears throat> what are your thoughts on extended cuts of movies? Do you like them or do you think they're kind of just cash grabs that are just kind of labels to put on the Blu-ray so people might buy it, it to have more incentive to buy it? Let us know in the comments below. Always like hearing from you guys. And just a reminder, we are nine weeks away from the 200th Jeez. episode. Nine That's weeks. crazy, so dude. Let us know your favorite Uncharted Media moments down in the comments below. Uh, hit us up on all the social medias. Let us know which moments you think should be in the big 200th episode special edition episode. And I'll try and do my best to make sure we get that in there. And as always, if you like what you see and want to see more, subscribe to us on whatever audio platform you're listening to. It's on whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or YouTube. And if you haven't already, subscribe to us on YouTube at Uncharted Media. Help us get to 700 subscribers before the end of the year. That's our main goal. And as always, stay sharp, movie guys and gals.